Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Make sure you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And today it's very important that we talk about this new voter law out of Georgia that could potentially be a game changer for Republicans and why exactly the Democrats are just freaking out about it and why that possibly could be a good thing. But also, could this just be a weak attempt by Governor Kemp to salvage any credibility within the Republican Party that he potentially has in the state of Georgia ahead of the 2022 election, because as you know, there's a lot of Republican candidates that potentially could challenge Brian Kemp in the state of Georgia, and polling-wise, it's been a little bit mixed, but it is possible he could lose a primary and Donald Trump was not too happy with his response to the 2020 election in the state of Georgia. So if he decides to endorse a challenger, whether it be Vernon Jones or Doug Collins or whoever, it's very possible that Brian Kemp could lose a primary and thus not be reelected as governor out of the state of Georgia. And even if he does win the nomination somehow, Republicans could be fractured and it could potentially lead to somebody like Stacey Abrams actually becoming governor in the state of Georgia, which would have been very shocking to think about just a couple of years ago. But now as you look at the state of Georgia, Joe Biden was declared the winner in the state of Georgia, winning by massive margins in the suburbs compared to past Democrats. And Republicans raised a lot of questions about the results in Georgia, and they want to make the voting system more transparent. They want to count the votes more quickly because it took four or five days until all of the votes were counted. Donald Trump was leading for two or three days, and then his lead evaporated, and Biden took the lead, I believe it was two or three days after the election, and Donald Trump never got it back, and then Biden was declared the victor out of the state of Georgia, winning by just 12,000 votes according to the vote totals here. So Georgia has decided to pass election integrity laws to prevent certain things from potentially happening during the election. This legislation expands the voter ID requirement and limits the amount of drop boxes that you will see here. And it also speeds up uh, the voting process. It also speeds up the time that people will spend in line in terms of voting. And all together, I thought it was a decent piece of legislation. If anything, it didn't go far enough. But still, Democrats whined about this legislation. They called it racist. They called it Jim Crow. They called it worse than Jim Crow. Here is what President Joe Biden had to say regarding this legislation. Take a listen. That we'll be able to stop this because it is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. Worse than Jim Crow. He said it makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. What the hell is Jim Eagle? Does Biden watch my content? Was he mistakenly referring to Red Eagle? Obviously, I'm not some sort of supporter of any segregation. But as we know, Joe Biden is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Jim Eagle. I, I, I don't even know what that means. The guy clearly has mental deterioration going on right now. And he says he wants to run for re-election. It's not going to happen. The guy's going to be 82. Right now, he's going to look stellar compared to what he's going to look like in about three or four years. That idea that he would run for re-election is a complete and total joke. Let's see if he can make it to the midterms first uh, without Kamala Harris taking over. But either way, I thought it was a fairly solid piece of legislation. It definitely prohibits any potential shady things from going on, and it limits the window of absentee ballots to 11 days. That is good. You don't want to have to start voting in September. You don't want to have to start voting in early October. A lot can change, okay? A lot can change. You don't want to cast your ballots two months away from when an election takes place. A lot of things can potentially develop, and that is one of the things I think played a role in Donald Trump's loss. A lot of people didn't know about a lot of scandals about Biden that surfaced within the last couple of weeks before they specifically voted. That is an issue. And in terms of voter ID, voter ID is something that you should have, obviously. You have to know who you are before you are voting. It doesn't matter if people are going to be honest most of the time. Uh, you can compare this to drinking, you can compare this to bars. You need an ID to go order alcohol from a bar. 
it's not racist to drink at a bar. It's not. Drinking is not racist at a bar, going to a movie theater. That is not racist either. I've never seen this argument made for anything other than voting. There is zero excuse for anybody not to present a voter ID when they go vote. And on top of that, the fact that voter ID somehow disenfranchises black Americans is completely unfounded in reality. It's based off of a poorly conducted study in the 1990s in New York City that consisted of around a thousand black individuals. It showed that statistically they were slightly more likely to not have an ID, but that's not a very big sample size. It's one study 20 to 25 years ago uh, consisted of a poor community, typically with a lot of Caribbean immigrants in there as well that may not have potentially had an ID at that point to begin with. So very flawed study. There's zero proof that voter ID laws are racist in any way, shape, or form. It's really not a thing. It's not like anybody can go to the DMV and get an ID. Black people and white people are equally as capable of going to the DMV and getting an ID. Even Vox admits, several studies out of Vox admit that voter ID laws do not hurt minorities. That is a very left-wing source. There's also studies out of Heritage Foundation, a right-wing source that back this up even more in depth than what Vox was talking about. But even Vox admits that voter ID laws are not racist whatsoever. Secondly, talking about limiting the absentee ballots, we're going back to 2016 voting standards. 2016 was not worse than Jim Crow. Anybody who tells you otherwise is just coping with this fact. They're worried. They're scared something is going to change because we know that the elite use dark money. Biden got seven times the amount of dark money that Trump got. Specifically, what did they do with this? They lobbied to change the voting laws without the consent of the state legislatures in many cases, and that altered the election in their favor. And you talk about drop boxes. That's the other thing. Absentee ballots and drop boxes. We covered absentee balloting. We covered voter ID. Okay, let's talk about drop boxes. We've seen this happen before. It's not common necessarily, but it's possible. First of all, a lot of ballot harvesting can happen. We've seen all those Reddit posts about people changing ballots potentially from Donald Trump to Joe Biden, these Redditors bragging about it. Are these claims fairly unfounded? Yeah, they can be, but it doesn't mean that it can't happen. It obviously can. Ballot harvesting happens a lot in terms of drop boxes in Boston, 35 ballots were destroyed this year in a drop box fire. This is not a conspiracy. This is actual evidence right here. And the FBI was investigating what happened in the city of Boston. Obviously, it did not have an impact on the election because it's Boston, obviously. Massachusetts is a very sapphire blue state. But still, if this can happen in a close swing state, it is something that is worth looking into because anything can happen in an election. You have to have broken window type of mindset when you talk about election laws because one vote, you look at Florida in 2000, it was about 500. One vote in uh, any election in a swing state could potentially determine the outcome here. It's really the way it is. Anybody who really tells you otherwise is just coping as I said before. And in terms of voter suppression, it's real. Voter suppression is real. We don't do it, by the way. We don't voter suppress. The Democrats are the voter suppressors. Uh, they suppress our votes all the time with big money, mass immigration diluting the electorate, the control of media, the control of culture, and anything else that could potentially happen. But removing a few drop boxes that are insecure, you could take ballots out of them anytime you want, potentially, if you are skilled enough. These did not exist prior to 2020. They say it's suppression and worse than Jim Crow somehow. Now, in Jim Crow, I don't know if you guys know this, but black Americans were barred from voting with poll taxes, with literacy tests, and not just like a basic literacy test that would be applied across the board, because obviously if you had to, for example, be able to read a very simple passage to be able to vote, it would be obviously a lot different if everybody was given that, but that's what they did to white Americans, and then black Americans, they got this crazy test that was extremely complex that even professionals and experts still struggle with to this day. And you're comparing removing a few insecure drop boxes that didn't exist prior to 2020, it, worse than Jim Crow. I, I'm not going to use the argument of, of Democrats or the real racists. That's not what I say when I say this, but it is an insult to people who actually went through that stuff. It is absolutely an insult to people who went through that stuff. That's not me making a virtue signal. That's just a basic fact. It is an insult 
to people who lived through actual forms of Jim Crow legislation, but removing a few drop boxes. No, that's worse somehow. Why? Because it limits the opportunities to get the candidate that the elite supposedly wants. Okay. Yeah, sure thing. Whatever. And I've said it before. I said Democrats, by the way, but this was in December. This was December 7th. I said Democrats are going to use the fact that 2020 had high turnout as an excuse to mandate wide-scale mail-in voting in the future and call every Republican who disagrees with that complicit in voter suppression because they would be lowering turnout. I said, you heard it here first. And as many of my predictions are, this one was proven to be correct. Who possibly could have predicted this? The election mafia was going crazy last night. They were saying that this was Jim Crow. This was suppression. It's not suppression. It's not suppression at all. It's literally not that hard. And why do they act like this? Because they know it's not true. They know it's not true. They play like they're 50 points behind when they're 50 points ahead, and they keep winning. And the right needs to take note. Stop whining about it. Strategize. That's what we got to do. We got to strategize. The whole anti-SJW stuff from 2015 to 2020, it blew up in our faces. And our culture has deteriorated even more since our culture is even more filled with these mindless NPC SJWs. And that doesn't mean that whining as a whole is useless because we need emotion sometimes. Obviously, we don't want to whine. We're not going to come across as a bunch of emotional children the way that the left does. But emotion is important. This whole facts don't care about your feelings nonsense. Drop it. Doesn't matter. It's not getting us anywhere because you need emotion to connect with voters. But whining in general about your opposition strategy too much when you don't have any power, it's just futile. And that is something we need to stop. But in terms of the left's reaction to this, it's hilarious. They say, you're potentially being a threat to democracy because you don't want 100% turnout. Okay, you know who has 100% turnout? Iraq under Saddam Hussein in North Korea. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing when you have big money and these oligarchs and these corporatists controlling society, making people vote that really don't want to vote. Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think universal voting is essentially a good thing? Not necessarily. Because you look at what actually people believe in terms of what democracy is. The Barris poll shows that 84% of Americans support voter ID, 80% support signature verification, 60% oppose drop boxes, and 72% support election day deadlines here. So the Georgia bill is a watered down version of what the people want. So the same people that talk about democracy are violently opposing laws that are supported by the majority of the population. It's, it's just beyond me that these people are claiming that it's worse than Jim Crow because they have to do what they have to do to get what they want. And they are willing to do it because they want to maintain control of Georgia. And it's a left trending state. It really is. I think that Arizona is going to be competitive in the future, but Georgia, I think, will have to go the way of the Virginia based off of how the Atlanta suburbs are growing, regardless of what happened in the 2020 election or not, it will be a blue state likely by the end of the decade, even more so than a place like Texas, which I still think has hope for in the suburbs of places like Dallas and Houston, which in, in Houston, they trended to the right, actually. In Dallas, they still move to the left significantly. But Texas, I think, is more likely to stay a red state than Georgia by all counts. But in terms of what my solution to this is, vote at a polling station with an ID in person on election day if you're under 65 or you're physically able to. Otherwise, you don't care enough about the leadership of this country to cast a ballot. We need to make this a transparent process. I don't want all these drop boxes all over the place. I don't want it to take three weeks to count all the votes because people don't trust it. When that happens, we look at this election. A lot of people don't trust the results of the 2020 election. And if it was more transparent and without all these late dumps with, you know, counting the ballots the way Florida does and Ohio does, I think a lot more people would trust the election system of 2020. So like I said, vote in person if you're under 65 or physically able with an ID. Otherwise, you clearly don't care enough about this country to cast a ballot. It's not suppression at all. It's not that hard, but the media is going to run with it anyways. Our uh, president that's barely even alive is going to say it's it's Jim Eagle somehow. I really don't know what the hell that means. I really wonder what he's talking about. Is Did he mean to say Red Eagle? Uh, who really knows? But Biden is not mentally fit. He's not mentally there. And as a result, take my advice as is because I say that I'm 100% right when it comes to this and everybody else is just seething and coping. 
But either way, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Uh, but if anything, it could curtail some potential shady activity, and it will make it a more transparent process in terms of the 2022 midterms and the 2024 election. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, especially Alt Tech. The links are all in the description below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.